Harry flicked through the blank pages of the diary. Then he pulled out a bottle of scarlet ink, dipped his quill into it, and dropped a blot onto the first page. Excited, Harry loaded up his quill and wrote, My name is Harry Potter. Why? Then at last, something happened. Oozing back out of the page came words Harry had never written. Harry nearly upset his ink bottle, and then more words appeared on the page. I know all about the Chamber of Secrets. Fifty years ago, the chamber was opened and a girl was killed. I caught the person who opened the chamber all those years ago. Harry paused for a second and then wrote two letters. O. K. The pages of the diary began to blow as though caught in a high wind, and then the diary seemed to open up, and Harry was pitched headfirst into the opening. Harry saw that he was standing in a corridor in Hogwarts dungeons. Peering through a crack made by an open door was a boy of about 16. Harry knew at once that this was Tom Riddle, the owner of the diary. How? Then Harry heard someone speaking in a low whisper. Come on, we gotta get you out of here. Come on now, in the box. The voice definitely belonged to Hagrid, who, Harry now saw, was crouching down in front of a large box. Riddle suddenly stepped out from the doorway. Evening, Rebaeus. It's all over. I'm going to have to turn you in. The least Hogwarts can do is make sure the thing that killed that girl is slaughtered. The young Hagrid rose up to his full height and roared at the top of his voice. It wasn't him! He wouldn't! He never! And then, from out of the box came something that made Harry let out a long, piercing scream unheard by anyone. A vast, low-slung, hairy body and a tangle of black legs, a gleam of many eyes and a pair of razor-sharp pincers. The thing scuttled away, tearing up the corridor and out of sight. No! The scene whirled. The darkness became complete, and Harry landed with a crash. Later, Harry met up with Ron and Hermione. What's up? Harry could barely get the words out of his mouth. It was Hagrid, Ron. Hagrid opened the Chamber of Secrets 50 years ago. So, yeah. Uh, very, very briefly went over all that. Riddle might have got the wrong person. Maybe it was some other monster that was attacking people. Hagrid would never have meant to kill anybody. We've always known that Hagrid was expelled. The attacks must have stopped after he was kicked out. I'm going to the library to see if I can find information on Tom Riddle. And while I'm there, why don't both of you go and see Hagrid and ask him what happened? We'd better be careful, Ron. We're not meant to be out in the grounds after dark. Let's split up to avoid getting caught. At least you can use your invisibility cloak to avoid being seen. Remember that you need to collect these to power up your cloak. They only last a short amount of time, so make sure you're out of sight when they run out. You can unlock the doors by using these pressure pads. You just need to charm a nearby object onto them. I'm Ron. glad we've reached the point in the game we've where they decided fuck show. explaining things, let's just do stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's still. Nice one, Harry. I'll meet you at Hagrid's. Good luck. There is still a lot more, uh, uh, you know, there is still a lot more explanation than in, say, the PS2 game, where it was just like things happen, regardless if you saw the movie or not, you did not understand. There's also a lot more context in the fourth game, at least. Oh, nah, the fourth game is just like terrible when it comes to that. That one just like gives you. It, it's, it's basically. Uh, play, the, play the game while also watching the movie. Pretty much. It's. If, if it weren't for the filler content, it also would have been the length of the movie. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Snape lacks the ability What's to look that? up. Uh, no, that's not Snape, that's Filch. Sorry. 
So long as you're up, you will never be seen. Uh, if you're on the ground, um, uh, yeah, um, they will notice you, although you can sneak behind them so long as you're not in the light. The sneaking mechanics in this are actually pretty well done for a uh, um, uh, nondescript genre PS1 game. <laughs> that like, said, they, they don't have the same attention to detail that I loved about the first game when it came to sections like this. Oh, what Mercury do you mean? Would whisper his spell. Oh yeah, that was, I that that was the best part. Um, this is like, guard you, Leviosa. <laughs> that was great. And right as I made the joke about how is the troll not gonna hear you? Yeah, uh, it, it it was pretty cute, and I wish they kept it in here, but uh, at least we do get more uh, more interesting. Uh, uh, more interesting stealth sections. It's like, yeah. uh, at, at no point did it, it, did this ever feel like a fuck-through. Like, like the, the the stealth sections in the, in the PS2 game. Yeah. Like, as much... Uh, it, it may sound like I'm ha harping on the PS2 game a lot. I still enjoy it, but it definitely is way... Uh, way inferior in terms of design... Uh, than this one. Oh yeah. It's very rare that you can say uh, a PS1 version of a game is better than a PS2 version, I suppose. I mean, it's it's also hard to say version uh, here because they're all so fundamentally different. Right. As long as it's not the GameCube version, though, it's all good. Y yeah, the GameCube version is sadistic. <laughs> also, the McGonagall the music's is actually really fitting here. Mm-hmm. Really good. Uh, yeah. McGonagall is a fucking bat. She can hear you from very far away. Damn. Thankfully, um, also unlike the uh, unlike the GameCube or the PS2 version, you cannot lose house points, so you can get caught as many times as it takes. Reveal yourself. See, see what I mean? Jesus. See how Lady, far away I am crap. from her. See what I mean about her being a bat? Damn. She's got ears, dude. Who's there? What the fuck? Like, she cannot find me. Uh, she cannot possibly find me when I'm up here. Uh, that is impossible. She can't see that far due to her hat. Obviously. But now this section uh, gets quite um, quite challenging. First of all, yeah, we actually have to sneak behind him in order to actually get out of here without the invinci the invisibility cloak. Invincibility cloak. I mean, you can't get damaged here anyway, so it may as well be. We don't know. All right. Wingardium Leviosa. Oh no, this isn't the challenge, uh, the challenging part. Uh, there's another one which is a little bit more difficult than this. I believe it's the next one after this. Gotcha. Also, freaking Ron left out. All these people are not on his path that he took. <sighs> Who knows? I mean, we've already passed through Snape and Filch, and somehow they are they are here again. Right. <laughs> Maybe they can be in several places at once. They used a cloning spell. Who knows? I like that Harry itches his nose as his idle animation. Oops. But yeah, the, the, the best hiding place is above something. This is... Run, run, run. 
Uh. Don't mind me. And there was a very, not so very subtle cut. Depending on the section, it actually, um, it may actually take you, uh, it may actually put you back a few rooms behind, though it, the backtracking never gets too tiresome. All of these sections are very short, and once you've, once you've done one, you will, uh, know uh, exactly what to do next. This no, one... Don't hit that switch. No, it, it's not as simple. Because, see, there is nothing to put on it. And the door is actually timed. Oh, no. And this is why I was looking at when uh, Snape was leaving. Because it doesn't stop for the duration of you going there or even pressing the button. It's, it's all real time. You made it in Harry. Shh. Someone's talking to Hagrid. Yet again, Cornelius. I tell you that taking Hagrid away will not help in the slightest. That must be Cornelius Fudge. He's a minister of magic. <laughs> my dad's boss. Quiet, Ron. Look at it from my point of view, Albus. I'm under a lot of pressure. Got to be seen to be doing something. If it turns out it wasn't Hagrid, he'll be back and no more said. So, where am I going? You'll only be going for a short stretch, Hagrid. It's not a punishment, more a precaution. If someone else is caught, you'll be let out with a full apology. Not Azkaban. Come along now, Hagrid. If anyone wanted to find out some stuff, all I'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. That'd lead them right. That's all I'm saying. Ron, look at all the spiders. I'm going to follow them. All right, be careful, Harry. I'll go and tell Hermione what we've heard. There's actually one bit of environmental storytelling that's missing from this version. Uh, in the PlayStation 2 version, you steadily see more spiders as you go through the game, and they're all leading to the place that uh, is gonna be, uh, you know, you're gonna have yeah, to go yeah. to eventually. But in this version, it's just like, oh, spiders in this section, done. All right. Which is a bit of a shame because that was that was one of one of the cooler things about uh, the PS2 version, which you wouldn't notice at first because it's just like a spider going across a field so you you may think it's a uh, it's just a decoration just like a bug or like a butterfly or grass or a shrub but then it starts becoming more and more apparent yeah. but yeah it's 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 missing here it's a bit of a shame but you can't have everything unfortunately